Hey guys, a while back I took a look at some Ethernet HDMI extenders and since I'm now living in a new house in which I intended to use them, let's uh, take a look at them again or revisit the topic basically. What I'm talking about is uh, these kits they come with uh, two units and in each goes an Ethernet cable. Now, although this is a standard Ethernet cable, it doesn't use any networking protocols. So it doesn't use TCP, IP or anything like that. So you can't use a switch or a hub or a router with it. You can only use direct connections to it or using a patching panel. Do not plug this into your switch. It doesn't work that way. It just uses the same type of cable to transfer its data. Okay, so if we unbox that, we get a little manual. And we get some infrared cables, but I won't be using those. We get a USB cable to which you can connect your computer or host. And in theory, the USB should be transmitted over the cable. Last time I didn't have great success with that because it's very picky about which device will work and which won't. So I won't be looking at that today. I'll do a separate test because I can't do that right now because the computer I want to view is busy. And I'll leave a note in the description and in the comments. Okay, then we get two power adapters and these are 5 volt, 1 amp each. Okay. Then we get our uh, sending, no wait, this is our receiving unit because it has two uh, A USB ports and an HDMI out. And it also has CAT5E, 5E uh, e and 6, and the 5 volt power plug and two status LEDs. Okay. So then we have our other unit, it also has CAT5E6 and power. And then it comes with HDMI in, serial, if you want to use that. I guess the other unit had serial too, I just didn't mention it. And USB to PC. So you can connect your uh, host PC, the PC you want to have the uh, view of, the, or the image of, to this box. So in theory it should transport USB. But as I said, I didn't have a great experience with that last time. Okay, let's uh, hook it up and see if it works. Okay, on this side we have everything hooked up. We have a CAT6A cable going to my wall socket over there. It's the black one. Okay. And then we have a USB cable. I decided to hook it up anyway. Connected to the device. And we have an HDMI cable and power connected to the device uh, to give it picture input and power the device. So let's go to the other side of the house and connect it all up there and see if it works. Okay, we're in the office right now. And as you can see, I haven't mounted up my patch panel yet. But I have connected most of the keystones, including the ones I'm using in the garage. So here we see that Another black cable is coming out. It's going over here to another one of those boxes, as I showed you before. And from that, a white HDMI cable goes to this monitor. And right now it's displaying my normal screen. But if I do a source selection and I select HDMI, there we go. This is the exact screen as was running in the garage. And if I remember correctly, there's about 35 uh, meters of CAT7 cable between here, two keystones, one on each end, and then a five meter patch cable on each end again. Those are CAT6A or CAT7 rated basically. So 
this is how you transfer HDMI through your house. And once I have the patch panel hooked up, I can easily uh, patch one of the keystones into another to get the screen where I want it. Now I did try using my keyboard, keyboard that I use in the garage with the uh, USB pass-through, but sadly again I couldn't get it to work just like last time I had trouble with it, so don't buy it for USB pass-through, you'll probably have to use a different device with a different cable for that, so you'll need two UTP cables, but then you can perfectly pass through HDMI without any loss in quality or any latency actually too. So now that we see that it all works, what can you use it for? Well, in my case, I'm running a test system in my garage with which I'm testing two new hard disks, which take about 12 to 14 hours each to test. And I don't want to walk into the garage the whole time and check its status. So now I can just flip an input and I can see the status in my office. But that would mean I would lose the image in my garage. Yes. But if we add an HDMI switch into the mix, you can duplicate the HDMI signal and have the image here in the garage and also in my office. That also works if, for instance, you have a gaming PC and you normally game on your normal monitor, but also want to be able to game in the living room with a wireless keyboard and mouse, for instance. That way, you can transport the HDMI signal, including audio and 1080p 60Hz, to your living room TV and have your, base, your basic console without any lag or stuff like that. Or you can turn that setup around. Let's say you have a PlayStation or Xbox in the living room and you often game on a living room TV, but sometimes someone else wants to use the TV and you want to game in your, uh, your bedroom or your office or somewhere else where you have a monitor with, which has an HDMI input. Well, you get one, two of these boxes or one of the kits and you can lag free transfer that signal to where that monitor is. And then you can just use the wireless controller that comes with the Xbox or PlayStation to, you know, still control it. Of course, the distance can be too long, but in my experience, five to 10 meters is fine for those controllers. So um, I use it for a sort of remote KVM and I'm still testing solutions on how I can pass through uh, the USB over Ethernet too, because with these boxes, it's kind of hit and miss. If you want to buy it for that functionality, I can't really recommend that. But image-wise, it's perfect, it's lag-free, it's compression-free, it's basically the original image just on a monitor that's 30 or 40 meters away. So, even if you're thinking about buying an HDMI cable that's maybe 10 or 15 meters, or what is that, 9 or 13, 14 feet, I would advise against that because HDMI spec goes to about 5 meters, which is about 9 feet, I believe. Um, beyond that, it's kind of hit and miss. Yes, you can have luck with a 10 meter cable, but it's not guaranteed to work. In my opinion, using one of these boxes, as I said, there's easily around 40 meters of cable between the origin and the receiver, or the sender and the receiver, and it works flawlessly. So, I can highly recommend these. As I mentioned, I'll have some links in the description where you can buy uh, these boxes for the cheapest and the ones I tested. And um, I'll also throw in some links for HDMI splitters or switches and stuff like that. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, maybe give it a like, maybe share it, and I hope to see you back in future videos. See you then.